Hey everyone, it's Dr. Joyce, and as part of May being Skin Cancer Awareness Month, I wanted to do a special post today about how to choose the best sunscreen that's right for you. So let's get started. So basic guidelines first. We recommend choosing a sunscreen that is broad spectrum protection and also SPF 30 or higher. So what does that really mean? SPF is a measurement of what percentage of the UV radiation is filtered out. So a sunscreen that's labeled SPF 30 actually filters out 97% of the harmful UVA and UVB radiation. So there's two types of radiation, as I just mentioned, from the sun. There's UVA and UVB, and they're both bad. So UVA is the type of radiation that's found in tanning booths, and it's associated with photoaging, meaning it causes wrinkles, dark spots, sagging skin, you know, all the things that we don't want. It's also been shown to be associated with skin cancer. UVB, on the other hand, is also associated with different types of skin cancer, such as melanoma, squamous cell carcinoma, basal cell carcinoma, things that we definitely don't want as well. So you want to choose a broad spectrum sunscreen because that means it covers and blocks both UVA and UVB radiation. If you know you're going to be out in the sun for a long time and might not necessarily have time to reapply, then I would suggest using an SPF 50 sunscreen that would block an even higher percentage, 98% of the harmful radiation from the sun. In addition, if you know you're going to be swimming or around water, potentially, then I would suggest you to choose a water-resistant sunscreen as well. So those are just some of the basic rules of choosing a good sunscreen, but I wanna go a little bit deeper and look at what are good sunscreens for people with particular types of skin. So first of all, there's also two types of sunscreens, just like there's two types of UV radiation. There's physical blockers and then there's chemical blockers. So the physical blockers contain ingredients such as zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Physical blockers are the ones that come on the face a little bit chalky and can leave like a little bit of like white streaks on it and some people might not like that. How they work is exactly like their name implies. They physically block and deflect the UV radiation from your skin so that it doesn't penetrate through and cause damage to the cells. And the other hand, on the other hand, there's chemical sunscreens, which contain ingredients such as cinnamates or PABA, and these work by actually absorbing the sun's radiation and turning it into heat energy, thereby preventing it from actually damaging your skin cells as well. So which one is better? It really depends on you and your personal skin type. So first of all, if you have allergy prone skin or very sensitive skin, or if you are a baby, because babies have sensitive skin, then I would suggest going for a physical sunscreen, ones that contain titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. And the reason for that is some ingredients uh, in the chemical sunscreen category tend to cause allergic reactions or inflammation of the skin. And so you'd be better off choosing one of the physical sunscreen blockers. Um, also for kids, uh, it can be really hard to get them to stand still uh, and while you rub on all of the sunscreen onto them, especially if it's a physical blocker because then it can be kind of chalky and white. And so what I found is that spray-on sunscreens work quite well. And for those, I just want to remind you, never spray the, sun the sunscreen directly on them. Um, always put it, spray it into your hands and then apply onto uh, your child's skin. Okay, moving on to other groups of people. So if you are uh, prone to rosacea or acne, then there are some special sunscreen considerations for you as well. I would tend to stay away from gel-based sunscreens uh, because those contain alcohol, which is primarily a very drying agent. And while that may be good, for some people who are super oily and who are prone to breakouts, that may actually also irritate your skin a lot. You also want to stay away from sunscreens that are too oily on the other end of the spectrum because that can also clog your pores and uh, promote breakouts. So sunscreens that come in a cream formulation might be too oily for you. 
On the flip side, if you are an acne patient and you're on treatment, a lot of the medications for acne treatment, A, make you more photosensitive, so it's even more important you put on sunscreen, and also B, might make your face uh, and your skin very dry. So in that case, it might be a good idea to choose a sunscreen with a moisturizer mixed in. Third group of people, if you have very dry skin, um, then you'd also want to consider using a sunscreen that is inside a moisturizing vehicle. So I fall into this group, this category of people, and it's really good for me because I like to kill two birds with one stone in the morning and have to just do one application of one cream and then be done with it. So my personal favorite is the CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizer, which contains SPF 30, and it's in a moisturizer. And it's not too greasy, and it's pretty lightweight, so I can still, you know, have it on and not even really feel it. So that's my personal favorite. Um, okay, number four. For darker-skinned individuals, you may feel like, oh, I have natural protection from the sun because I have darker skin. And to a certain degree, that, can, that is true. Individuals who are darker skinned, it's like you have an SPF 10 on when you go outside, just by virtue of your darker skin. However, even though you have darker skin, you can still sunburn and you can still get skin cancer and sun damage and photo aging. So, uh, I would recommend that you also use a sunscreen every single day and while some people might not like the physical sunscreens, especially because they leave white streaks, uh, I would recommend that you guys look into a special new form of physical sunscreens that contain micronized particles. So that means the particle size of the physical sunscreens are much, much smaller. They're like shrunken down so that they're more easily absorbed into the skin and way more easy to apply. So I think that could be a very good solution for you. Other than that, I also wanted to briefly touch on uh, some questions that I received. A really common one I got was, well, you know, my foundation has SPF in it, so can't I just use that? And I know it's so tempting. Um, I really like my Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer, even though it only comes with SPF 15 or 20, something that's low. Um, and it's really tempting to say, I just want to put on one thing, it's foundation and it's moisturizer, and it's sunscreen, why can't I do that? Well, the answer is because you simply don't put on enough product to get the full uh, protection from UV radiation. So the order in which you should apply things in your morning routine is number one, wake up, wash your face, put on moisturizer, then you put on your sunscreen, your base sunscreen. For me, this would be my CeraVe. And then if you're using foundation or powder or anything, that's when you put it on on top of that. And then beyond that, you can do your eye makeup and whatnot. So that was what I had for you today, uh, a little primer on how to choose the right sunscreen for you. Um, it really depends on your personal preference, your personal skin type, um, but the basic rules stay the same. SPF 30, broad spectrum, and uh, yeah, protect your skin. And as usual, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below or uh, visit my blog, teawithmd.com. Follow me on Instagram or Snapchat, and uh, I love hearing from you guys. So I'll see you soon. Happy Skin Cancer Awareness Month.